So it is something like you throw an iron ball on a tissue paper and the tissue paper bounces and break. So quite surprising. And from here, Rutherford concluded that actually the thing that we are calling an atom, its whole mass is concentrated at the center of it. And this center is like that if the whole room is in atom, then this mass is concentrated at the center and just like a saint, just like a saint in the whole room. So all of the atom is actually empty. The whole mass is concentrated at the center. And he called this thing nucleus and he said that it is possessing a positive charge because the alpha particles are also positive particles and they were reflected by this positive core of the air and he termed this thing is the nucleus now how heavy this thing is if I fill a teaspoon of the nucleus matter like all the teaspoon is having nuclei then it will be approximately 500 million tons of mass so you can imagine how dense this mass is how concentrated this mass is 500 million tons of this and later on it was confirmed that actually this positive core which we call the nucleus are in reality protons they are particles and they are actually protons so the nature of the element can be changed when the number of protons will be changing like hydrogen is having one proton helium is having two protons lithium having three protons and so on you reach for example 79 protons and it will be gold you reach 92 protons and it will be uranium so the practice which was over here that they wanted to change silver into gold here they came to know that unless and until you change the number of protons you cannot change one element into another like you remove one atom from gold one proton from gold it will become silver atom Right? So they came to know about this fact that it is the number of protons which is changing the nature of the material. Okay. And then in 1932, in 1932, you can look here, 1911. So almost after 20 years, means two decades passed, and then James Chadwick. James Chadwick was a person who discovered that this positive core is not only having protons, but also some neutral particles. And those neutral particles were named as neutrons. So neutrons in combination with protons were called nucleons. And why this nucleon's name was given? Because inside, inside the nucleus, you cannot recognize which one is neutron and which one is proton because at one instant 
one will be neutron, the other instant it will be proton. So they are not recognizable inside a nucleus. So that's why they were called as nucleons. And then this was a question that electron was also found in that time electron its actual name was actually negatron but later on it was changed because due to the negative charge it was given negatron but then it was changed to electron so this was a basic question that whether electrons protons and neutrons are the building building blocks of a material like they are no more further divisible this was a question and the people came to know that yes this electron is a fundamental particle it is no more further divisible and yet some people are trying to divide this one into its constituents but no success so far but this one and this one the nucleons were actually not the fundamental they were further divisible and it was came to the knowledge that these are made of okay that these are made of quarks and what quarks are made of made of strings later on these were this and yet this thing is going on that what the strings are made of and so on but at this point we will stop here we will not go further into this one but we will address the two big questions and the two big questions are that when inside the nucleus this is nucleus and I say that there are so many protons like 92 here in uranium 79 in gold these protons are actually positive charges and they are concentrated in a very very small region which I call the nucleus then why not they are repelling each other it's a question why not they are repelling each other why they are concentrated in this very very small proportion like the whole mass of this room for example is concentrated in one piece of sand then why not they are repelling each other so the question was why not protons are repelling each other each other in why not protons are repelling each other in inside a nucleus this was a question and now it was also came into knowledge that if this is a nucleus this is a nucleus and electrons are revolving around it The next question was, if electrons are revolving around it, electron is a charged particle, and we know about a charged particle. If 
electron is a charged particle and we know about a charged particle that whenever you accelerate a charged particle it will emit radiations it will emit electromagnetic radiations this electron is a charged particle and you know circular motion is an accelerated motion because at each point the acceleration is directed towards the center means at each point the electrons feel that someone is dragging it to the center that is the acceleration direction so why not this electron is emitting electromagnetic radiations so this was the next question why not a charged a charged particle particle which is electron is not radiating even it is accelerated it is an accelerated charge and it is not emitting electromagnetic radiation so these two big questions they establish two fields of physics one was nuclear physics which addresses this issue that why not inside nucleus protons are repelling each other and this one why not an electron is radiating electromagnetic waves this generated our the field which came into being due to this is the quantum mechanics so two fields of physics were established in order to answer these questions right we will not go into discussion of the nuclear physics but our subject is quantum mechanics so we will consider the quantum quantum mechanics case now inside the quantum mechanics case we know that people were thinking that matter and waves matter and waves are two different two different things matter and waves are two different things but there was an experiment which was uh, done by in 1801 this experiment was done by thomas young and thomas young did this experiment so thomas young did this double slit experiment which was a double slit experiment what he did then he just designed two slits and light for example it was shine on those slits this was s1 and this was s2 and then he observed that there was a maximum here and a maximum in front of this one so like when over here we are getting a maximum and over here a maximum these two can combine and we can have we can have the resultant of this is like this 
because the central point it will come here when you add up the intensity 1 and the intensity 2 so this will be the intensity which is I1 plus I2 both the intensities will add up and we will have some pattern there but what about what about if we if instead of the light like it was a wave okay it was a wave if we throw electrons here what will happen whether they will follow the same pattern or it will be different because one thing we are addressing is matter another thing waves electron we say it's a matter and the waves are waves so two problems actually occurred and those two problems were means of thinking this and this differently thinking of matter and waves two different things the one problem was the Blake body radiation. 